Good day, folks. Uh, someone was very nice and was um, able to send me a rodent coil. So here it is. It was looks like it was homemade, and it was two Cat5 cables, as you can see here. When I originally got it, um, the user only had uh, one set of them, and then the others were not even um, cut, so I cut them out. So basically, I rebuilt my... Um, pulse generator here made it easier to access so I was just testing with a 9 volt battery and it does the same thing um, pulls the transistor just much cleaner than my previous setup here what I did is to explain this is uh, I started off like I had the windings are tricky to find here but um, what I did originally is I just took two windings here and put them together to make a coil here and there and I started pulsing that with the transistor here and something very strange with the rodent coil is uh, it had very little back EMF I was expecting to use the back EMF to, to make I thought maybe it would work better but once I measured it I was getting something like 12 volts with the um, that was that, that I swept all the frequencies I could and that was the best I could get is 12 volts of back EMF so I got partially um, disappointed with that and I started messing around with it and I realized that it was emitting a lot of um, magnetic fields enough to light up this LED on the coil here from that point I was able to fine-tune it and I realized that because I've got a lot of coils here I took another pair and I shorted them out to form another coil in here and that coil seems to resonate and feedback and all of a sudden I was getting like 50 60 volts here's my back EMF diode there's nothing on it right now that's just the back EMF side to get me the plus so when I connect the negative I get the back EMF here so not only did I notice that, well that got me thinking again the, because there was a lot of magnetic field, the one wire system. So sure enough I, I cut the, the last three, there's one here, one there, and one there, and I did the one wire system rectifier here. And sure enough there's a lot of voltage here on all of them. And I will show you that, I'm going to turn it on right now okay so now it's on and that was the best frequency 2.63 K and something that was really weird is uh, the duty cycle I guess because it's somewhat canceling configurations in here if I go any higher than three or four percent the brightness and the voltage goes down so it works differently than what a normal transformer where you give it more duty cycle the more output it has this works opposite and at 1% it's not enough to trigger it, at 2% all of a sudden big brightness and at 3, 4, 5 it starts to dim. So guess what, we left it at 2%. So now that that's on, I'm going to show you the meter here. We're going to take so DC here and we're going to take our first cap dump, well I mean the diode here. Okay. There we go. And we don't have a um, capacitor, so it's more than that, right? Because the diode is just, there's no filter here. The meter is a bit confused. So that could be like 80. So here's one diode set up, and here's another one here we're going to tap into. This one here. 61 volts on this one there. So they all have varying voltages. And this last one here. It's all on one wire, folks. All right, 85 volts here, just off of this one here. And there's a lot of RF here, because look at the light. Very bright, just from being near the... And I've got another coil here, which actually amplifies it when you put it on top. And our light goes super bright. See that? It's so It's distorting very very bright and I put another one wire cap dump on this coil here and we get another half decent amount of voltage and these all work independent from each other see minus 50 55 so 55 volts here 
and it's just the passive and the light goes on. And what's interesting is they're all independent and we can short them out. So here's one wire here. I'm going to short one of these out just to show you this, how cool it is. And look at the light here, okay? So I'm going to try and zoom out a little bit so you can see. See, not even a, a blink. I'll shut it right out. Traditionally on a system, this would kill, right? Nothing. It's very, very bright. They Just to show you that they all work independently. So we could use this. This is the next phase is to cap dump everything. But again, I'm starting to run out of parts again. I'm still waiting for more um, spark discharge tubes. And once that happens, I will have at least four cap dumps staged here for very, very little. This is idling right now, 2%. And we're getting all of this energy out of it. And this one's, we know we're shorting out one and it's not affecting all the others or the generator or anything at all. Nothing's getting hot. So completely backwards again to traditional electronics. I'll show you the scope. See, what's very interesting here is um, why this is so much powerful is um, when I shorted the loop here and made another loop, it created resonance and that's creating all kinds of feedback and high frequency harmonics, which is actually a good thing for what we want. So we're triggering it at 2.63 and I'm going to show you what happens here on the scope here. I'm going to give you the auto range just so we can zoom into it real quick. Okay, so I just use this here as a um, probe for the scope and to see the frequency and this is what's coming in like 368k, which is not at all, but but the, the, the voltage means nothing. It's really low, I understand. It's just my probe because I don't want to be on there direct, but I just wanted to get the frequency count, right? And um, you can see that it, it, it's very um, spurious. It appears random, but it's not. It's just because of the um, <clears throat> feedback and whatnot. But yeah, around very high frequency. And that's what's feeding all of this uh, magnetic field here and giving us all this extra is all of these rich harmonics that the uh, rodent coil is generating as essentially RF or a form of it anyways. So I hope you enjoy. And again, thank you for watching.